A few words about one important lesson that the development of China, I think, should teach us in Ghana, maybe in all of Africa. The rapid development of China commenced in 1978, when the country adopted a dual system of liberal market economics and a communist political system. Between 1978 and 2007, the economy grew at an amazing 10% average annually, and per capita income in China increased 10 times. From a nominal GDP of 200 billion in 1980, China's GDP grew to 7 trillion in 2011. By the way, Ghana's GDP, GDP we are currently at about what, 70 or 80, 77 billion. The question we should ask, and which, I, which made me curious, is how come a country from, how can a country come from a communist centrally planned economy and rapidly change to a liberal market economy so successfully? And I found that a big part of that answer lies in a massive amount of policy assistance that China received, embraced, and used from the Bretton Woods institutions, particularly the World Bank and the IMF. These institutions are the unheralded, but the key architects of the remarkable successful economic story of modern China. It is well known that, and I'm quoting Michael Pillsbury, that by 1990, the largest World Bank staff mission was in Beijing. Without revealing the bank's behind the scenes role, China's leadership put almost all the international organizations' advice. Indeed, one economist, and many of you here will know him, well known in Ghana, became the bank's principal economist and was instrumental in designing strategy and policy for China. A gentleman was called Peter Harold, and he was a World Bank country director for Ghana. And amongst his many battles in Ghana was getting Ghanaians to accept the HIPIC initiative. Our national pride was too fragile to accept it. Accepting debt forgiveness was considered demeaning. I wonder how many people still think that way today. From Ghana, Peter Harold moved to China, where he used the same analytical tools and expertise to make a huge difference. I strongly re recommend a paper he edited with two others titled Macroeconomic Management in China. And it is uh, a collection of the papers presented at an economic conference in Dailin, China in 1993. The hard fact is that these institutions actually do more analytical work on our economy than we do ourselves. The least we can do is to seriously consider the policy options they suggest. It is fashionable in Ghana to condemn these institutions and claim no country has developed under their watch. This is patently false. Across Asia, these institutions have given advice and helped nations grow their economies remarkably well. These institutions produce the Asian tigers. In Africa, we want to be lions, but ignore the medicine the Asian tigers took assiduously. From the free zones concept as part of export promotion policy, to gratis technology centers as a foundation for our industrial development and regular tax policy advice. The World Bank and IMF have given good and useful policy advice to our nation.